90.5, the Night Brookdale Public Radio. Jeff Raspi here with Matthew Cause of Not a Surf. Hey, Jeff. Uh, how are you? How you really doing? good, really good. Thank yeah. you for taking the time to join us. You are uh, in the midst of your first tour in, I'm going to guess, almost two years. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and you've got uh, Friday the 19th at White Eagle Hall in Jersey City and Saturday the 20th at uh, Music Hall of Williamsburg in Brooklyn. And I guess the first question is, how are you finding two years since the last show? <laughs> how is how is how are the shows doing? Like how how are you guys doing? Yeah. First of all, with them, and then how are our crowds handling being in a crowd? Well, uh, we're we're doing just fine and really enjoying it. You know, um, I am actually despite being in a rock and roll band, uh, I'm pretty noise sensitive and um, prefer the quiet, but I, <laughs> I did miss, that being said, I did really miss the volume. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the great exception is I, I really shy away from noise except when I'm on a stage or watching a band I like, and then I'm all for it. So I've, I have been enjoying that feeling, you know, having kind of the bass in your chest and everything. So that's been great. Um, and the, the audiences are wonderful. Uh, I will say uh, it's not as masky out there as I had expected. Um, and I'd had a conversation with a good friend, um, a dear friend, uh, Carly James, and she was sort of like, she's an agent and she was saying, you know, just go for full masking all the time. And I guess maybe we didn't really have time to for the bandwidth to really think about how we were going to do that. Um, but anyway, uh, it's not very masky. We're testing all the time and thank goodness we're all still negative, but I, I don't quite know what to say about that. You know, it, it, it's very sad that if we got into that conversation, we'd be getting into politics. I wish we weren't. I wish we were just talking about health. Um, but I know it's more complicated than that. So what else? Um, but it feels fine. Uh, I don't, do what I used to do, which is I don't really go out and meet people anymore. I was going to say, I think a lot of artists are still reluctant to do that. And, yeah. and all of the merch people I've seen have been masked. Oh, for sure. And, and, and shielded and there's a shield up and stuff. And as I've been saying every night at the shows, you know, um, in the past, one of my favorite things about going on tour is, is meeting people after the show, because a lot of, uh, you know, fans, there's people that, you know, concert uh, goers have become really good friends and some, you know, almost like family. And, um, uh, you know, and I, would, I just say, like, I'm a sorry I can't do that tonight. And I hope the future normalizes and we can do that again. Um, so, so yeah, my, my work day has uh, shortened by half <laughs> because I used to go out and spend as much time signing stuff and saying hello as, as the concert, you know. Mm -hmm. um so now i just uh, retreat um so i don't know it's it's great you know uh i love playing audiences are great shows are great everything's good excellent cool so uh and i did notice that the music hall of williamsburg show is also going to be simultaneously live streamed uh i think that's right yes so yes. so not even in a delayed sort of uh situation it's actually going to be live live stream. Uh, i guess so and i i'm <laughs> i'll need to get up to date on um what exactly that is and whether profanity is allowed and not that i have right. a not that i have a sailor's mouth but uh i'm sure things sneak out so i'll have to <laughs> brush up on what exactly yeah, I, uh the heat of the moment to. something may slip out okay. yeah but right. uh, I, I believe it's on Twitch TV or twitch.tv slash Bowery Presents. Yeah. So it's the internet. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so are these the first shows you've been able to do since uh, Never Not Together came out? Did you guys get to do any touring? We did two shows. We played once. Oh, in, no. <laughs> we played in Vigo uh, in Spain and we played in Ibiza in Spain. So we, we've, that's where Daniel, our bass player lives and uh, in Ibiza. And so 
we've gotten together there twice for these sort of 10 day uh, writing, uh, you know, band practice sessions. Um, he, he put a, a practice studio in his house, which is great. Mm-hmm. So it sounds super exotic and it is, but it is really the best way for, there's room in the house for us. So it's like the best and most economical way for us to get together. Anyway, we were out there and a couple of shows came up. Yeah. So, so only two shows. Yeah. <laughs> That's a shame. Um, but I guess, well, I guess you and everybody else finally had to, like, I, I know Jesse Mallon is, has said that, uh, you know, they had a handful of dates left in England when they started noticing sold out shows had 75% or 75% people in the rooms and friends and family were calling from America saying, you guys got to come home. And, oh, uh, oh, that, oh yeah. Uh, no, we, we lost two tours. Yeah. We yeah. were. Yeah. We were right in the middle of Never Not Together. We were going to do two American runs and two European ones, and we'd done one of each. And we hadn't quite finished the European one uh, when when we stopped. And yeah, you know, in retrospect, we maybe should have stopped a few days sooner than we did. Um, but you know, within the touring bubble, it was sort of hard to have a handle on on what exactly to do. And of course, yeah. you know, there there is that uh, the show must go on kind of feeling when you're on the road you know we've never canceled right unless i'm forgetting something i don't think we've ever <laughs> yeah um, i mean and and to say nothing of you know especially in those early days nobody was 100 percent sure what the right move was exactly exactly and and uh you know we did something in paris that was interesting and ended up not exactly backfiring but it was weird uh you know we were playing this place in paris with 1500 capacity and it was sold out and then this ruling came in that there was a thousand person uh limit so we were gonna have to cancel it and we thought hey why don't we just play two shows so we did um and that seemed like a really good idea the thing is there was a balcony um and they closed the balcony so as to be able to get people in and out faster so to make the two shows happen so ironically uh a regulation that was put in to keep people standing further apart um, kept, you know, uh, <laughs> didn't, it didn't pan out. Our, 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 our ruse to get around that and keep people safe uh, didn't pan out. Yeah. They were yeah. still smushed together. So yeah. that, that, uh, our, our, our intention was good. Absolutely. And, and, you know, everyone who might look back in hindsight and say, oh, maybe we shouldn't have done that. Again, nobody had the answer then. That's so right. that's right. You know, try try anything if it seems uh, logical and safe and and doable. Yeah. Uh, then go for it. Yeah, and, you know, and and it's it's a real pity that exactly that what you're saying. Like, you know, we were people were doing their best with the information they had at the time. Like, it's a real pity that that attitude can't uh, isn't more universal. You know, because I know there's a lot of you know, around the sort of tribalism of masking and stuff, there's been all this fuss made that like, well, they said mass and then they said not mass right. and then they said mass. So who can you trust? It's like, well, man, you know, we all try different things as, as situations develop. So that, that's life, you know. For, yeah. for, and, and as I've said many times, that's how science works. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Jeff Raspi here with Matthew Cause from Not A Surf. Always good to see Matthew. Not A Surf will be at White Eagle Hall in Jersey City on the 19th and Music Hall of Williamsburg on the 20th. And uh, you mentioned that you guys are, are testing yourselves every day. And I must uh, mention that uh, it was nice to see that you actually had a case for all of the tests. Uh, yes, I did. That you brought over. You posted that on, on Instagram. And, yeah. uh, and it's in a guitar case with a 90.5 The Night sticker on it. That's right. <laughs> good eye. Very good eye. Uh, yeah, it's funny how after 20 years, I can, I can pick them out of a, yep. there you out go. Of a lineup on everybody's totally. guitar case or road case. No, you're a sticker. <laughs> so there's actually a new release uh, yes. since uh, Never Not Together, which is, yes. uh, you guys are calling it a companion piece. Yes uh called cycle through which i mm-hmm. i part of me sort of remembered it existing at record store day this summer and yeah. another part of me didn't even recall it so i listened to it the other day 
And I was like, oh, this is beautiful. And then it led me to the question that I always ask about songs that ended up getting left off of albums. Uh-huh. How? Well, <laughs> I know. Well, it's a length, it's a it's a vinyl length yeah. thing. You know, it just that's the way it goes. Uh, <laughs> you know, and I bet I bet a lot of bands have been in the same situation. Absolutely. You know, too much for one and not enough for a double album. Absolutely. So, I think everyone's been in that boat. <laughs> yeah. And we call it an EP, but cycle through is is album length. Yeah. But we're calling an EP because uh, since there are three versions of So Much Love, it would really be uh, unfair right. uh, to the consumer to call that an LP. Yeah. And they're, and they're actually, for those of you who don't know, listening, there are actual rules uh, regarding length of release and whether or not it's a full length or an EP or a oh. single, uh, or at least there were. Yeah. Some records are quite short, though, isn't yeah. that isn't that the case? Well, I feel I mean, like the, the, you know, it's a shame about Ray from the Lemonheads is the is the I think the most legendary one. I think it's thirty two minutes or something like that. Right, and Diver Down by Van Halen is also I very short. Is yeah. like twenty eight minutes or something. Yep. I I think uh, I don't want to talk through my hat, but I think that uh, records are trending shorter now. Yeah, yeah, I would think certainly I mean, they it, trended much longer when when CD came out. Yep. And looking back, it's kind of nuts. Like in the early '90s, records were very long. Yes, yeah, and I, and I think that was long. that was a bit of human nature. I think um, with the advent of CDs, and you yeah. could put eighty minutes of music on one. Yeah, yeah, of course. So yeah. you tried to find 80, 80 minutes of music. Yeah, and some of it probably didn't need to be there i like how um i kind of like how things drift towards a standard in that you know um we all we always talk about uh how well maybe we'll change how we'll do it maybe we'll just put out two eps a year you know screw the lp let's just yep. let's be free and we always sort of come back to just wanting to make a record and and you know there are all, all kinds of times you can have meals but we really like breakfast lunch and dinner yeah no, you know, it's kind of a, it's a pattern. It, it works. Although in entertainment, I guess what's changed is that now there's the all, all binge at once series, you know, because yes. we like the half hour TV show. We like the hour TV show and we love the hour and 40 minute movie. But now we also love, and I, and I do too, uh, the, you know 10 episodes in a weekend yeah <laughs> which is essentially like you know like a season of ozark or whatever is like what I, I don't know the number but it's like it's like a seven hour movie and it's fantastic yeah and i yeah that's that is something that's that's only come up in the last few you know until the ability yeah ex- finally existed of ooh, they've got all of whatever i mean seinfeld is is now on streaming surface right so it's like I'll watch a season of Seinfeld a night. Right. But it didn't originally come out as a season. That's like the new <laughs> twist is that now things come out in a whole season and you can watch the whole thing. So right. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But there is something to be said about, you know, waiting for that time on a day when you oh, yeah. have to watch the next installment. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and also that common experience, you know. Yes. When there were like, whatever, I mean, to say nothing of the days of radio, but uh, radio plays you know but when, when there were like not that many tv stations and and there were only two movies on on a sunday you know half your town might have seen the same movie on yep. the same night and maybe that's some kind of maybe there's some social fabric that's woven from that from that common experience i don't know i bet there is you know um i mean you know it it was only recently that somebody started saying spoiler alert right like <laughs> Because before that, we all saw it at the same time. Right. right, right. Jeff Raspi here with Matthew Cause. Uh, Not a Surf, his band, will be at uh, White Eagle Hall in Jersey City on the 19th and on the 20th, Music Hall of Williamsburg in Brooklyn. Uh, you mentioned that you guys go to uh, Daniel's place mm-hmm. to uh, rehearse and practice and stuff, which is interesting because I, I, I'm not sure. Most people, I think, think of you guys as a New York City band. Yeah. But you're not all here anymore. 
Uh, none of us are here anymore. <laughs> none of us are there anymore. It's true. Well, you know, um, we've all uh, felt free or, or let each other feel free to pursue uh, whatever paths uh, life opened up and we've ended up in different places. And, uh, you know, I think that kind of freedom probably uh, contributes to the longevity of the band. You know, I was going to say, or do you feel that that's helped? Keep yeah. the band around, or I think so. uh, even with the added layers of difficulty of, you know, uh, passports from different countries, uh, yeah. you know, and especially in today's world, rules for traveling to and from yeah. different countries um, versus all of you living within, you know, five yeah. or six blocks of each other in New York City. Yeah, there, there, there are loads of pros and cons, you know. Um, our carbon footprint is is not great, and I and I do <laughs> think about that more and more, and feel honestly terrible about it. Honestly, really, really bad with how much traveling we need to do. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think if we'd all stayed in New York, uh, if we'd felt obliged to, maybe it would feel more stressful to to be in the same band twenty whatever. Yeah. I can't count that high 29 27 <laughs> 30 years later whatever it is um yeah so daniel's in spain um ira elliot our drummer is in sarasota florida oh. uh, louis lino our keyboard player is in austin texas um daniel is in ibiza spain and i'm in cambridge england <laughs> so That's as long as you can make it work yeah so far so good so far so good and it's and then the one who probably has the most difficult time is Ben, your manager, because he has to remember everybody's in a different time zone when he's trying to talk to you. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, you're right. So we're not we're not all right. He he really is like okay. He's not like a member of the band, but he is. <laughs> you know, you know the bands are. If you have the same manager for a long time, it starts to feel like a band member. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but I did want to also mention um, part of. Uh, the cycle through release, which, as I said, was a record store day thing, but is just now available digitally. Mm -hmm. There's a 10 minute track uh, film soundtrack mm -hmm. uh, yeah. kind of thing. And yeah. you guys you guys made a 10 minute film with the legendary music video producer, Mark Pellington. Yes. Uh, director. Um, yeah. Although I, I, I didn't misspoke, misspeak. He did actually produce this, too. Uh, right, sure, sure. <laughs> but everybody knows him as the director of like Pearl Jam's Jeremy and the Connell 7475 to name just two that ended up being iconic. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did you guys know each other? Like, how did this whole 10 minute film slash soundtrack project come about? That also includes the voice of your dad. That's right. It does. Yeah. We have a friend in common, uh, a, a, a school friend of mine, Tori Vogt. And she's good friends with him and kept saying that um, that we should get together. Um, and so we did uh, get in touch. And um, well, the de the details are tra tragically, you know, he, he, he lost his, his wife and uh, Inside of Love was one of the songs they enjoyed together. And so I, I sent him a 45 of it and, uh, you know, um, commiserating and we 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 started to correspond a little bit and then he'd mentioned that he'd love to do a video sometime and, and that he was particularly drawn to that song. And so it seemed, you know, that, that felt right. And, and, and he asked whether we'd be open to him sort of being free with it and, and making it a longer video. And we were absolutely. And then he asked me, was there any text in particular that I, was reading that resonated with me and 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 my father had passed uh, recently you know shortly before that and um in a couple of years before my father passed uh i i'd been able to put together a project called um the book of hylas and the book of hylas was a little collection of meditations that he'd written and uh and i thought it'd be great to put them to music so um there's a wonderful group in Cape Cod called Parkington Sisters, mm -hmm. and um, they uh, they they wrote music. They recorded him uh, reading these meditations, and they wrote music to it. And it's it's really lovely. There's a there's a book of it, 
with illustrations uh, that Barsook Records put out. Um, and anyway, so um, I told Mark about that and I sent him the text and, the, and, and he really, he loved it. Uh, and so we put, we, we uh, interspersed some of my dad uh, reading uh, in and around the song. And I think it's because that, that song uh, just way the way uh, Mark was interpreting it uh, correctly is that it's you know it's it's very it's got peaceful advice you know um, just wait mm -hmm. you know, things will life is overwhelming that's true but time helps and and if you just breathe a little bit and and try and relax as much as you can uh, you'll be around when things work out yep. Um, so, so yeah, Mark sort of put them together and, and made this, um, made this wonderful video, which she calls a music film, which is absolutely, it's a music film, uh, 10 minutes. And, and so, yeah, and we, and, and Louis Lino added a lot of, uh, atmospherics, um, you know, um, keyboard swells and, mm -hmm. and, and wonderful, uh, evocative sounds and um anyway i'm talking about it a lot but it's it's lovely it's 10 minutes long and uh i hope uh listeners get a chance to uh take 10 minutes out of their time and check it out it's yes really, it's really, it's really yes cool. and it, it's easy to find on youtube and it yeah. is well worth the 10 minutes uh jeff raspy here with uh, matthew cause from not a surf i know that we have to wrap things up so that you can move on but i did not want to let our conversation go without mentioning that uh daniel is not on this tour right you guys and you've brought in a ringer yes <laughs> My old so right so, so yes D D daniel uh had a foot injury and then a knee injury which uh aggravated the foot injury and <laughs> and so we we miss him uh but it's but it would have been unwise for him to do the tour he might have caused uh, permanent or, damage so yeah. So he's resting that up. And yeah, so Ed Velauskas from all kinds of groups, uh, but we we knew him from the gravel pit because we toured together in 1996. And he's yep. a rad, rad dude, really great guy to travel with and a hell of a bass player. So um, uh, he's doing a really good job of filling Daniel's shoes and and, uh, and the shows are going great. Yeah, and it's good because he hasn't been on tour in a long time. Yeah. <laughs> but I... I started thinking about that when I saw you guys post that Ed was filling in for uh, Daniel on this tour. Uh, I know Ed because uh, I, I, I technically I know Ed and you because of my old boss, the late Brad Morrison from Absolute Go Go Records. Right. Because when I started working with Brad in 1990, he was very good friends with Ed and the Gravel Pit. And it, they were still in New Haven at the time. Yeah. And your old band, yours and Daniel's old band, yeah. because, 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 mm -hmm. had placed themselves in front of Brad and Absolute Go Go Records. And if I remember correctly, you guys opened uh, or supported Winter Hours on what ended up being, I think, their last handful of shows. That's possible. I'm not sure if it was a handful. Gosh. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure it was at least had. two. I think right, Maxwell's right. and somewhere in New York City. That makes sense. That makes sense. And then I was Winter Hours uh, roadie for yep. a little while, <laughs> <laughs> which was an and, incredible experience. Yeah, and and to, to, you know, going back to the beginning when I thanked you for for uh, doing that little video, I don't think I've ever publicly thanked you as well for oh. uh, taking taking the time to write a short essay uh, for the Winter Hours tribute record that I put oh, right. together. I think it's more than 10 years ago now. It might be 12 right. or 16 years ago. Right, right, right. Um, no, you're, very, you're very welcome. Uh, they're, they're a very meaningful group to me. and and well, I, As well as contributing yeah. a track to it. <laughs> yes. And I can't remember what I said in the essay, but all those guys, uh, you know, Bob and Coach and all of them were really, really sweet to me. And and Michael Carlucci in particular was was a major uh, mentor of mine, dear yeah. dear friend, and, and really took me under his wing and taught me a lot. And uh, yeah, I miss that guy. Yeah, so it's so when I like like I said when I saw that you guys were bringing in Ed, I was like, wait a minute, it's going back to Brad again. 
Yeah, right. Like, and right. I've I've said this before, and actually we did we did kind of a a memorial celebration thing at Monty Hall in Jersey City about a year after he passed away, mm -hmm. um, because I I had ended up working in the office probably about five years, so I mm -hmm. kind of saw everybody all the bands he worked with and all the stuff that happened in the office. And so I, and because of what I do for a living, I ended up being the host. So while I'm waiting for a band to get themselves ready, I just re recounted a bunch of stories of whatever the five years of just watching. And it, it occurred to me that a vast majority of my friends in 2021 are people I met in 1990, 91, 92. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That's because great. Because of Brad. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> it's wonderful to have those pivotal moments in life, right? Yeah. It yeah. Resonate. And That's a lot great. of the things I do in the music business still go back to, yeah. like, I didn't realize he was teaching me something. Right. But here it is again. Right. That's great. That's yeah. really great. So uh, I know you got to go. Uh, yeah. As always, thank you so much for taking some time with us, Matthew. Matthew Cause from Not A Surf. Don't forget, Friday the 19th at White Eagle Hall in Jersey City. Saturday the 20th at Music Hall of Williamsburg in Brooklyn. That show is also going to be live streamed on Twitch.tv. Uh, Notasurf.com for more information, uh, or actually any, all information on <laughs> Not A Surf. And uh, maybe the next run you do a show on the Jersey Shore. Why that is that this good. on this run? I don't know. That's a good idea. <laughs> I'll try to make it happen. Cool. Thanks a million, right. Matthew. Always good to see you. Thank you, Jeff. Always great to see you. Thanks. Take care. Okay, bye. All right, here we go. Must have read my mind